So we're low on fuel. Uh, we made the adjustments we needed to make last night. Boat's running. Boat's running the best it's run. So get out there and see what we can do. Here we have a challenger, I believe, for the Parvies in the factory billet. Jim Schultz. Yeah, that's right. They went 162 yesterday, and they were up by the Parvies boat by six miles an hour. So they're looking to get past the 166 to be the fastest V bottom out here. Boost your tails up. That didn't take long. It didn't right take long. It went right by. Center. Went right by the uh, new finish line buoy. <laughs> finish line buoy. <laughs> oh, holy cow! Are you serious? You know, it's it's kind of like peaceful. You know, especially with the canopy boat. Turbo engines take away some of that harsh noise, so you can be definitely in a tune with the boat. You know, yeah. it's all this. I actually prefer it better because it sounds kind of like, you know, it's very, it's all the sound you hear is, is like just enough mechanical sound. Yeah. You can, everything's happy, you know. And you can take that out drive when you turn it though, oh my God, it's so smooth. It's really nice. feeling when it's really that nice so you can quick wiggle test you know she's still happy something that Jim's working on oh okay <laughs> Jim's always got stuff going on so yeah. you never know with him <laughs> <laughs> yeah. me and Matt drove the boat down on uh, Thursday right so all the way down there, me and Matt are talking, you know, what's going to happen and stuff like that. And, you know, and I, I was really shooting for 170. I would have been more than happy with that. But, you know, we, we had this wastegate problem the, the year before. I, I didn't even tell the Parvies. Of course, because they're very competitive, but no. That's not really the reason, but no. The, so, yeah, about three quarters away in, in, during the run, the actuator, it had defaulted. Being inside the boat, it was kind of strange because it was like everything was smooth and it was still happy, but it was like going really slow. And I'm, you know, Jim like looks over and we're like, what, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> but it was weird because me coming from the drag race where I was ready for the thing to explode because usually, you know, when the thing lays over like that, the engine's about to break because that's what happens. But it kind of did that same thing, but defaulted all the, you know, to like, have to boost what we usually run. So it was just like a Sunday drive. It was kind of weird. <laughs> so that was always something that, that we knew that we, we had, but I honestly felt we had it fixed. So we're going down there, driving down there, and it was kind of nice just me and Matt driving the truck down, you know. Jim flew down later. I'm Jim Schultz, uh, owner of the 51 Outer Limits factory billet. Been a boater my whole, well, a boater my whole life, relative whole life. Um, started water skiing when I was four years old behind a Mastercraft boat. Um, just intrigued with the water, spent my summers up in Michigan, you know, skiing the entire summer breaks. You know, we were always intrigued by the, the go fast boats per se. And then we, I was introduced to Outer Limits. Um, and then just the overall styling and you know, just what those boats look like back in the, the early 2000s. It was just, you know, with what they were doing with carbon fiber and the aesthetics of it all, I was very intrigued by it. So before we even took delivery of the 47, we traded up to the 51 to the boat that we see today, which is the uh, factory billet boat. Every year we're trying to go faster, every year we're trying to, you know, behind the scenes, no one knew this, was our number always from the beginning was, we're gonna do 170. That was just a pie in the sky number that we, you know, we made up and said that's what we're gonna try to achieve. You, know, you don't know what it's gonna do if you've never done it before. So what we've always enjoyed was every year we'd go a couple mile an hour faster and we would learn what the boat would do, how it would perform, how it would react um, at those different speeds. If he ever sells anything, he's the person to buy stuff from. <laughs> because I don't care if it's a snowmobile, a lawn, yeah, lawnmower. We bought a power washer. The thing had like aluminum polished wheels on it. I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> so uh, we can't do anything more until Jim gets here. We're gonna bring the boat over there. So now it's just moving the boat. Yep. And then putting it in the water. Or? Yep. Okay. Cool. Yep.
This is when the magic happens. <laughs> Basically, our little assembly area, and this is my favorite part. Dino room. So basically, uh, when you're testing the engines, the engines get they put they sit on a, a docking cart, and they actually get attached right here. And basically, the, this is an absorber that has water as friction, and the water is used as the it's what holds the engine back and it gives it the load and this measures all the, it's like a big, it's like going in a doctor's office, you get probe sensors and everything hooked up to it and it's, this is the fun part, running a thing for a long time and this was all part of the development work, so. So here's the control side of, of uh, things. Uh, so this is the computer system that actually runs the dyno itself and then there's a computer that has all the data acquisition side of things and then, you know, you get all the feedback and information from it. And then I usually have a laptop here and that's what I use to tune the engines with. So when you're running it, you get all kinds of, you know, computer screens and dashes and everything, but it's, it's pretty cool. We also dyno test uh, certain engines for, for certain customers and stuff like that. And drive work, Matt does drive work. We did Dennis, you know, Jason Parby's drives and, you know, transmission work, stuff like that. So we, it all depends on the person and the customer really. Foucher is a real smart engine builder, the best of parts, they got their own dyno right there. Mike is really connected with a lot of good engine people. He builds, builds he's a professional engine builder, builds drag race motors and stuff like that. And uh, I'm pretty sure there's probably more left in factory billet. The way uh, Jim's passion and Jim's uh, engineering side of the things is one reason why we have this beautiful facility. You know, it took a year and a half to build the dyno room itself, and it was just so many pieces of the whole puzzle. It's you know now that I look back, it's it's you know it's hard to you know 11 years went by, but it's kind of really gone by real fast. The, the whole setup that the, the original factory billet boat was a 1075 boat. It was designed and built strictly just to do poker runs, and then we had a fuel fuel tank that ruptured. So then the boat was down for a few years while we were getting that repaired. But while we were having that repaired, we then kind of set off to say, hey, let's build a different type of boat. When we got the boat back to Chicago from Rhode Island, when that's when we made the ultimate decision that we were gonna, we were gonna do something special. We were gonna do something different, something that no one's ever done before. The boat was completely stripped. It was gutted. Um, you know, it was basically ready for a re-rig job, so it was kind of a perfect scenario. You know, w one thing we never touched though, we never touched the bottom, we never touched, the, uh, you know, uh, modified the X dimension, anything like that. That boat is 100% the way Mike built it, other than, you know, the boat was gutted and it had a different cockpit in it. So it was a perfect scenario for us because I knew that if we were going to do this, we had to take it to the next level in every aspect. You know, I had to step down into a living quarter deal and that, it wasn't flying, so Jim, you know, took all that out and put a real sexy cockpit in there. And fuel system, water system, every part of the boat had to be redone. You know, not not too many people would actually give you that you know type of chance to actually you know think out of the box that much. So it was perfect. It was the way we needed it. When the boat went out to outer limits had the fuel tank replaced, the intent was we were just going to bolt the 1200s back in and um, we are going to continue just making a recreational boat go out and have some fun. boat comes back and the boat came back in a little bit rougher shape than, I, than it went there. So then at that point I'm like, well, you know what, let's gut this thing and let's start over from scratch. And then I determined at that point, right, we're going to need some guys. There was a gentleman that was an engineer at Outer Limits that put his notice in and was looking for a new job. So I, he was the first guy, the first part of our team, he came out. And then over the period of uh, probably about six months to a year, three other gentlemen joined us from Outer Limits that became part of the team. Two of the gentlemen being Mike Foucher and Matt Foucher, no relation, just happened to both live in Rhode Island and didn't know each other. Um, but probably some of the, uh, absolutely unequivocally, the two best motor guys as far as I'm concerned in the marine world. 
You know, when Jim asked me to come out here, I was like, well, we need somebody else because, it, I mean, it's a, it's a like niche market deal and what we do is, is really, you know, it's kind of uh, tedious work. And so it really worked out well knowing Matt because Matt is very quiet, is very reserved, but it was great. You know, Matt, Matt's a real hands-on mechanical guy, really transmission gear guy. And so it was great. You know, I, I came from the engine side, and, but Matt is very technical, hands-on. So, you know, we got the, really involved in the, the drives of the boat, the number sixes, you know, taking the number six to the next level. Matt being a transmission gear guy, it all worked out. You know, Matt sits in the corner and the hours he's got into those drives. But, you know, that's that's his deal. That's what he likes. and. You know, I do the engine side of things, and it's really been a, a good deal. And, you know, even though Jim is not really an engine guy, he's got good, you know, practical common sense, of, and it's really worked out. It's a very, I'm a kind of fussy, picky guy, and, you know, things are really got to be done a certain way. And it's not that my way is always the right way, but my way is my way. Good, we're double-checking everything we did yesterday. Well, I know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> you think you fixed it, and then you're like, oh. Check it. One uh, reason why uh, Factory Villa is so successful is the engines are, are every part of the engine is really built for what it's doing. Uh, cylinder heads, the, the block, connecting rods, pistons, you know, camshaft, every part of the engine was really designed around what we're doing to it. Valve train, the turbos, the fuel, you know, it's all, uh, people say, you know, what makes it so fast? It's not the one thing. It's the 6,500 things all put together that make it a, a, you know, a working piece. That transition from that year one to year five, the amount of t you know the testing we did, the amount of development that we did, and we were truly looking not for parts that just were off the shelf. And we're going to bolt a bunch of you know performance parts and make a bunch of power. This was true innovation. Um, Three-speed gearboxes, um, all fly-by-wire shift, um, all shifted through the ECUs. The headers are awesome on it. It's a 3D printed Inconel. Inconel is a super metal. A lot of you know internal jet engine parts, hot sections use Inconel um, for their thermal properties. We actually went to England and had those 3D printed. So you can imagine every one of those headers on that is the exact CFM throughout, plus perfectly water jacketed throughout. You know you can do a lot more with a 3D print than you could ever do trying to hand bend pipes and weld them together. The 88 millimeter turbos, water jacketed, proprietary product precision turbo that we worked with. On the intake systems, the header systems, the uh, servo systems that control all the wastegates, the accelerometers, yaw meters that control roll and pitch. Um, the boat is completely computerized when we run the boat. Short of auto throttle, it's the only thing you do in the boat is push the throttle down. Everything else has been programmed to do what it needs to do in that three quarter mile. Um, there's really no inputs from Mike that sits right seat to me and myself other than just push the throttle down and hang on. Hey, hi, hey, John, how are you, buddy? Do you need a radio? Thank you. What? Yep. No. no, thank you very much. Good luck. Hey, you too. 78A. Yeah. 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 I'm Ron Dugan, sometimes known as Captain Ron, and uh, I'm the president of the Lake of the Ozark Shootout and the owner, of, obviously, of Captain Ron's. You know, and some of, you know, some of these guys, this is their only event they come to, you know? You know, people like Factory Billet, people like American ethanol, you know, it's the only race they come to. And so that says a lot to us, you know, that we have that quality event that they want to come to and showcase their boats. And, and I can't imagine doing 170 miles an hour in a V-bottom boat. I mean, it's just incredible. And, you know, these guys, you know, they have nerves of steel, obviously. And, you know, it's great for the sport. I mean, it's, in, it's a true crowd pleaser. Now we're off to a slow start this morning. 
Um, we were hoping for an early start and early run. But due to the weather, we had some pretty good downpours. We're just recovering from that right now. Looks like they're going to start running the electric boats now, and you know, we'll be first up after that. We're hoping to be the, one of the first three boats to run. How are you feeling about conditions? The um, it's cool out. Luckily, it's, you know, we don't have the heat that we've had the last couple days, so the cooler, um, the cooler it is out, the more performance we'll have. But it looks like it's starting to rain again, so we'll see how long we're delayed. Jim Schultz from Lake Zurich, Illinois. This is the factory Dakota. billet boat. Okay, this is your shootout against okay. the Parvies. Oh, against the okay. Parvies. Yeah, we had so, a great run. Yeah, so these guys got to go faster than 166 Woo. miles an hour in his V bottom. We get down there on Saturday and we get, we're ready to make the run and Jim puts the throttles down and I'm in it. I'm like, oh, it's there. Jim Schultz, he's right. been here before, Port of Gaulle, Chicago. And then all of a sudden it did that like where it lays over again and I'm like, oh my god, again it's fighting us. Okay, here we go, we're gonna get this car, 162! Oh, no kid. So I was a little, to be honest, I was definitely bummed out. They're four mile an hour off the Parvies, I think the Parvies are down there high-fiving right now. <laughs> and, so, and so now these guys need to step it up. And uh, me and Matt came up with a plan and the crazy deal was, it was something that was kind of like, kind of, you know, we, uh, you know, a 27 cent hose clamp on the wastegates and I kind of, you know, came up with an awkward deal to try to alleviate the problem and I said, this is what we're going to do. I told Jim what we're going to do and Jim was a little, he's like, you know, what? Yeah. Who knows? You better grow something. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, cool. We're, we're, we're up at the hardware store right now getting a couple screws, so we'll, okay. we're going to through bolt it all. Bye. Seems to never fail, it's always down to one little thing. The answer to all our problems. I got a little screws. Hey guys, that's where we're at right now, which is a couple miles, so it looks like they're pretty the thick of it right now. So we're at we're at Captain Ron's and Jim's like, what do you think? I said, we need to bring it back to the Camden. I, I need to regroup. Me and me and Matt were coming up with options of what we got to do. I you know, I was not gonna settle for what we did. We're gonna the the wind the wind on the bluff, the cross winds that comes up the bluff and everybody's getting all discombobulated. I felt it earlier this morning where we got a little messy in the beginning and get through that part. It settles down. It's fine. Um, people are bailing out in low speeds right now, so. I think what we're going to do is just shut it all down, regroup, and we'll, we'll hit it again tomorrow. So when we went out um, Saturday and ran, um, we actually, um, part of the linkage came apart on one of the boost controls. A mechanical problem, not a, so not a, um, a hardware problem versus a software problem, um, but yet still sl slowed us down. So Mike was frustrated. Um, I think we were probably more frustrated because for the first time the parties actually got us right at 166. You know, yeah. they're, they're putting a party together and they're all they're all going out to celebrate that they got us. So um, even though we're friends, the competitive deal is still there. Yeah, and they're a little bit more competitive than we are. So, um, but at that moment, I kind of felt it going. Ah, you know, if we would have if we would have ran 167, honest, we would have been done. I I don't push the boat any any farther than we need to. Just just to top our number. 
So we went back. Mike's like, you know what? Let's just, instead of messing with this at the dock, let's go back. Let's regroup. Let's rethink this out. Um, and then Mike worked making modifications, hardware, um, some hardware and software changes and the changes you made. Yeah, but when I told you how we were going to do it, you were like, you sure that's the way we're going to do it? <laughs> Kind of the ideas Mike were coming were a little unconventional for what we would typically do um, with just basically <laughs> undoing well, we, it. What are you going to do? You know, you're there. Yeah, at you're the there. Races. We got to do it. It's definitely a cool day today. Um, temperatures are probably, you know, probably high 70s, which is great for the boat. Um, the wind is a little bit more than we would like. Um, throws us a kind of a, kind of a, can get us a crazy little side wind that can get us out of shape. Um, so we're low on fuel. Uh, we made the adjustments we needed to make last night. Boat's running. Boat's running the best it's run. So get out there and see what we can do. Well, there's five of us driving down Sunday morning to the shootout. And we had the you know, boat full of people. And so Jim takes it we, for a little rip and we, we gets on it. And uh, the boat gets up to about 150 real quick like. And it, it went, as soon as the boat, you know, hit about 140, we could feel the boat pull. It's never pulled that hard before, so I, I had a little smile on my face. I said, oh yeah, I think we got it fixed. You know, we're at Captain Ron Sunday morning, so we, we pull out in the, in the milling area, and I was, you know, not that I was nervous about not being able to, you know, to do well. I, I was just like, if it can just work, you know, whatever the number falls in the plate, I'll be happy with. Here we have a challenger, I believe, for the Parvies in the factory billet. Jim Schultz. Yeah, that's right. They went 162 yesterday, and they were up by the Parvies boat by six miles an hour. So they're looking to get past the 166 to be the fastest V-bottom out here. And they ran 162 yesterday right. is what we have. The Rooster tail is up. Out of Chicago. Acceleration. They got these outer limits are really known for being super fast V bottoms. In fact, the fastest record, the fastest V bottom record is held by an outer limit of about 182 miles an hour mile uh, in San Francisco River. That didn't take long. Right, <laughs> take long. right at a speed of 184. Oh, holy cow! Are you serious? At 184. It's 184. 184. That's spectacular for We're that. We're talking boat, isn't one it? mile an hour. That is the fastest V bottom ever here. Wow. At, no at way. Shootout. At the no shootout. No way. 184. Fuck! Holy fuck! We need something to Holy. And Jason Barbie said, holy shit. <laughs> Can't ask for much better than that. I don't know what to say at this point. We never expected anything. Dude, that expect was awesome. Yeah. Such a huge jump. Yeah. Uh, we weren't ready yesterday. We weren't ready. We, we had a couple glitches, but. To feel like a big jump to you? Oh, it was. Yeah, there was no part of the course I ever felt before. Really? So everything just finally, you know, what, what is it, six years I think we're doing this? Yeah. And it's literally finally. <laughs> Awesome. I saw like it was probably 175 or 176 and we still had some time left. I was like, oh, this is coming on. Man. It is 2008 outer limit. A 51 footer named Factory Millet. 184 miles per hour for Jim Schultz. Hot. 
Is factory built still for sales? Yeah. Everything's for sale. Um, if you'd have asked me this prior to the shootout, it was absolutely for sale. Now, with with the advancements that we just saw, the amount of you know, you're talking a 10 year journey, five years of building the boat, another five years, six years now, um, proving the boat out. Now we just find 18 miles an hour, right? It's, it's kind of hard to walk away from it at this point. So I think I think we need to go out again, and I think we need. Um, I know we can make some enhancements, some very very small changes to the boost control, and you know how we're going to introduce introduce the boost control into the motor. Um, other than that, we're not going to touch it. We're not going to take the motors apart. We're um, you know we're just going to find we're going to fine tune that boost control, and um, I mean we'll run it next year, and we'll let, and you can ask that question again.